Hello, good evening, and welcome to Darwin Nunez's world. It just happens that we all live in it. Um, this is the Talking Cop. I'm Gav, it's Keith, it's Emma, it's Shawnee, it's Nottingham Forest nil, it's Liverpool 1, it's one goal, it's a whole huge ball of fucking reaction, which has been absolutely incredible, and we're going to try pick it apart between now and 11 o'clock. If you're in the chat, you're very welcome. Hit the like button so we know you're in there. Leave your comments in there, and we'll try to read out as many as we possibly can. And uh, if you want to become a member for your own month, you can hit that join button as well. Don't ask me if you're on an iPhone. I'm not doing it again. Um, figure it out yourself anyway um liverpool <laughs> just about got three points at the city ground yesterday thank god because two minutes into the game you are singing about poverty and all this shit they're a terrible football club they deserve to go down and i'm putting on record i hope they go down instead of everything now i really really do and that takes an awful lot <laughs> that's where they rank that. oh, that's where they're ranking that now in the pecking a huge order. amount for me to say that an absolute huge amount for me to say that but anyway look as usual um the lads done an excellent post-match show after the show after the game yesterday kevin ma and um, they cover every little minute detail and all the minutes and all the notes. We don't. We look at the reaction. We look at some players. And then we get out of here. That's how it works. Keith, I'm going to start with you. Um, look, we go into this one and I felt we needed a few players back. They happened to be back because they were on the bench. But I went into this one and I was talking to Kev on Friday night and I said, Kev, you know, there's big games coming up. But this feels like the one that just catapults you into the, the running now for me. And I would have taken a 1-0 and we scored after 10 minutes or I would have taken a handy 2-0. But boy, Jesus, if you want to catapult the team, they were in 99 minutes with a header at the back post. Um, phenomenal gear overall. 100%, yeah. I mean, the team, we were all up in the air. We didn't know what sort of lineup it would be. But I think, you know, when you see Bobby Clark starting the midfield, I'll speak for myself, I won't speak for anyone else. I was looking forward to it. Do you know what I mean? You're not worried about it, whereas in previous seasons... If you see a young lad playing in there, you'd be like, oh, Joe Gomez, Alexis McAllister and Bobby Clark. I don't know about that. Whereas now you're looking at it and Bobby Clark, you're like, yeah, he's fine. Uh, let's see him. Let's have a look at him. Gomez in the six, you're probably not sure about, but it wasn't Bobby Clark. And I think these young lads, we've said it before, they've really, really stepped up. And how long we can build on it, who knows? And what sort of careers they have, who knows? But these young fellas have really got us through this period. And when I saw Bobby Clark getting a start yesterday, I was delighted with that. You know, because I think he's been really, really good. He's a player that I've liked, but didn't think he'd have this impact. You know, I looked at him for the younger teams and I thought, what, what is he? You know, he's a bit of a, where does he fit into the team? But he's a walker and I'm a big fan of him. So I looked at the team yesterday and I thought, okay, yeah, the forward line isn't doesn't have the big hitters in it, but the lads that have been sort of, getting us boy you know we can't argue with the results um so ultimately yeah i was happy enough to see to see the young fella coming in and playing and the reality is it's a lot of games in a short period of time and maybe it catches up on us a little bit but how it plays out jesus christ <laughs> that was unbelievable we'll come to that the exciting stuff in a minute but at the start yeah looking at it looking at their team as well there have a few good players in there. I know they're not the best team, and they are a gang of shitheads like the fans and all are, are an awful shower. But they've got players that can hurt you, except in the forward position, and the game pans out like that. I think Alanga's pace is, is a threat, but my Jay-Z doesn't have an end product, and thank God for that, because, you know, a team with a bit more cutting edge might have had a bit more joy against us yesterday, but we've talked about Cleveland Keller again, stood up when he needed to stand up, and... This team have a lovely little bit of momentum going going into this game and now coming out of it, it's like a fucking steam train. So yeah, let's build on that going forward. Happy days. Um he's talking Keith's talking about Bobby Clark there and, and we're going into it and I, I messaged into the WhatsApp beforehand when I seen the team and I went, Ah, we needed a couple of bodies back. But you you know what when you we're going to go, we'll go on to a goal and we're going to go on to players that come on and Alexa McAllister is definitely going to get a mention. But when you see that midfield, you know, and McAllister's had a lot of bleeding time, a lot of, a lot of minutes in his legs recently. You've got Joe Gomez, who's literally predominantly played left back this season um, for the longest stretch. And you've got Bobby Clark that's come in and come on the scene. Not even this season, I would say in the last four or five weeks, he, he's come, really come on the scene, you know, the sort of way. But they just keep turning around. They just keep going like, no, we're not having this. This is what we fucking do. And 
Klopp is going, no, I'm putting them on the pitch. I might have to just put them on the pitch. But when they go on, they know what they're doing. And like, they didn't look out of place. It felt like a centre half yeah. playing at, at six, right? And a young flip playing beside him. And McAllister, who earlier on in the season, you're going, does he have the legs to get around in this, in this midfield? It's just ridiculous. When I looked at him, I was more concerned about Gomez than I was um, about Bobby Clark. And I think that just kind of goes to show what kind of uh, performances the lad has put in the last while. Like, I think I put it into the WhatsApp. I said, did anybody blink an eye with Bobby Clark in midfield? And everybody was, no, not at all. Um, Gomez, <laughs> I think Gomez is... He's been a revelation this year. I, I probably would have been yeah. one of the ones that would 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 have written him off. Um, but mm-hmm. at the same time, I would have also said Matip had had a resurgence there um, last. Like he was fifth at the Knackers yard as well, and uh, he turned around and kind of we had a resurgence. And I, I would have loved him to see <coughs> Gomez have a resurgence. I think this year is Gomez's resurgence. He's Joe Milner this year rather than Joe Gomez. He's played left back, right back, centre half, now in the six. Probably didn't have the best of game in the world, but we were all kind of thinking that maybe McAllister didn't have the best games at the start of the season when he was forced into play the six. But then, Sean, you said into the into the WhatsApp group as well that everything in the first half seemed to be going through Bobby Clark. And one of the first things he does in the in the game is he nutmegs your man Yates, and we'll come to him later on. But um, and then he double kind of puts his two fan hands into his face. And then he nutmegs another lad later on. It's like it's like he's been playing in the team for the last three or four seasons. And uh, nothing seems to is that just him. is that just like you know like when you say t- players are in a rhythm and they, you know yeah. if you're playing two every three days or every seven days, you just want to play football. He looked yeah. like that yesterday. He looked like forget his age, forget the experience. He's just in a rhythm. He's won a cup. He's he's he was involved during the week. Now we here he is again and he's like, Yeah, I'm just playing with Liverpool, just what I yeah. do. And, and, and like Sean, he said, everything seemed to go through. Um, I would have preferred, and I did say in the WhatsApp, would have preferred maybe in the first half if Diaz was as wide as he was. Diaz seemed to be very narrow. Um, but look, it, it, I think we did all right in the first half, but very, very impressed with Bobby Clark. And like I said, I didn't bat an eyelid um, when I saw him on the team sheet. Um, I wouldn't have batted an eyelid if I saw McConnell either. Um, that's just the way. And look, we're not even mentioning Bradley. Bradley just seems to be like part of the former now. He's, 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 he's still, a, yeah. he's still yeah. only 20. Um, yeah. yeah, but he's um, swallowing yeah, around the gaff now, Colin. The other lads, the young lads. You know what I mean? He's had <laughs> enough of them now. He's, he's, he's broken away from them. Yeah. But look, there, there just seems to be this. And I, I don't know whether it's a, a kind of. It was happening before we heard that club was going. There's just this never known when they're beaten kind of attitude about this team this season. Like, if that game happens last season, we'd probably lose it 2 1. I'd say, but maybe even 2-0. Um, but there's just a steely determination in, in the team now um, that they just don't know when they're beaten. Um, and I'm sure we'll get to it later on. I was praying all sorts, touching wood. I was sitting exactly where I am now. I don't generally believe in God, but I had a word with him yesterday. Um, but that was only at the like the 92nd minute because I thought all the way through the game I was like now we're, we're going to get back into this and then I was like oh shit 92nd 93rd that's when this, I started blessing myself and everything and um, but uh, yeah look they're, they're just they don't know when they're beaten and we go into that game next week and I know we'll probably talk about it later on even if City some, somehow are beating us 2-1 they know that they have to go for the full 98 minutes and they cannot lose concentration because we're likely to, to, to nip in and get a goal so um, it's not over till it's over, and that showed it yesterday. Yeah, uh, Ashley says um, <coughs> his dad, I presume uh, Clark's father, who's Lee Clark, was on the radio talking about how Clark has moved into the senior dressing room a few months now. He's fully integrated into the first team squad, and that's suppose that's the stuff you don't see behind the scenes. Like it's not like Bobby Clark has just rocked up last Saturday and went, "Can I have a game tomorrow?" And he went, "Yeah, come on, let's go to Wembley and play." Shawnee, he's not he's not willing to get pushed about either. These kids, no, because someone says that. Yeah, it's someone said a bit. Yeah, somebody in there said, um, and I, I've, I've lost it there, but basically said like, oh there, Dylan says, always wants the ball, rarely makes a wrong decision, likes a foul when needed, and looks like he's had 90 uh, hard minutes in his legs. Yeah, he just does look like a player. He's just a player. And you have to treat them like that because Klopp has said it, they're young legs, but they know exactly what they need to do. So he holds them to a very high standard. Um, Shawnee, look, there were so many people out there 
you know, before the game, during it, definitely during injury time, kind of lamenting the amount of games Liverpool have had. And, you know, is this one game too far? There's still a few bodies out. There's a lot of minutes and a lot of legs there. When you look like a Gagbo, Elliot, McAllister, Virgil and more. But, Johnny, they just don't stop. And, you know, and you know what I mean? It, it's a great goal. It's a, it's a really good goal they score, but it's just relentless. And no matter how many subs they make, they are all relentless, Simicast included. They just don't stop. And you might argue we've loads of players out, which is true. Um, you might argue that the state of our squad compared to others going into this title race is not as strong considering those those um, people out. But I think we have something no one else has. I think we have something in us that just... You look at certain games, you think other teams, ah, they won't get back into this. Liverpool never look like that, Shani. Right until the death, they don't stop. Yeah, I, look, I, people are leaning into the whole club getting off thing and all, but for me, it's just, it's it's about principles, the principles of Jürgen Klopp's football team since he's come in. And everything is built on hard work. And the only time Liverpool have struggled in the last couple of years is when we didn't have sufficient bodies or legs to do the hard work that would enable us to go on and be successful. And we bang, we banged on on this show for for years and for, for, we banged on for years about players being enablers and the the Voinaldums and and the Hendersons and <coughs> being those allowing your, your attacking players to do. But the, the the whole this whole Liverpool two point out thing is that every single player enables the lad beside him to be in the game or to work as hard as the fella next to him. And it's not built on some sort of like doghouse mentality of two lads just fucking running ragged. It's a relentlessness. Look at the goal. I think it's Endo's pressing there, fella, when yeah. the ball comes out. And I, I, don't, I, I was fairly calm yesterday. Um, I wasn't posting much in, in a WhatsApp group while the game was on. Mind you, I was watching the game in the, the local watering hole and the, the screen was probably smaller than the laptop I'm watching it on now. <laughs> so I was like watching fucking Pro Evolution Soccer 5 from a distance. I couldn't see a thing. All of a sudden, <laughs> we were wearing purple. And then the, we we have the effort on 94 where the keeper makes a save after Darwin flicks it on. And I'm not going to swear my life, I was thinking, we'll get another chance. We'll get another chance. And I think... Top teams always seem to get one more chance. Like they always get one, and it's always going to come down to whether you take it or not. And the saying goes is everything can be a hundred mile an hour in football, and sometimes you can get caught up in emotion. And I see a lot of people are saying that now that this whole Liverpool thing is emotional. I don't think it is. I don't think it's not unsustainable. We flipped three, kept three clean sheets on the bounce. What's not sustainable about that? Like you know what I mean? But the, the saying goes. Cool heads prevail, and the coolest head in that stadium yesterday, uh, what the twenty five thousand people that were there, was Alexis McAllister, and, and that's exactly what we pay for. And in a moment of madness, he just shows, to, and I, I, I have no problem saying it. Like obviously, he, he's not as good. But... <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> So fucking get away car there what's going on that's down Keith's way some fucker there is my way yeah, yeah there's some fucker rally in a mountain bike in the back of his push bike <laughs> <laughs> Max Verstappen's um, had to get in a new motor yeah. go on uh, <laughs> uh, just messy like qualities to coin it when, when everything is going at 100 mile an hour he turns out and just clips it when I reckon 99.9% of the players in the Premier League are slashing at it or trying to walk the keeper and he just clips it, and it's a lovely little bit of movement from Nunes, and he's just wheeling away. And it, that's Alexis McAllister personified for me because in the fucking in the eye of the storm, he's the clown. Like you know what I mean? He he's the one that's it's all right. It's good with me. You seen in the World Cup final, games going a million miles an hour, balls comes when he's controlling the tempo of the game. He's been fucking unbelievable since he's come back into the team from injury. And he's about as close to war class you can be without being war class, in my opinion. It, he's not got much to go, but... Kevo um, Sullivan's, Sullivan's getting an awful lot of abuse because he's he said a, a couple of times this week he doesn't believe Alex McAllister is world class. He really he reckons he's really, 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 really good. Yeah, and I, look, I think I, war class... And is, I agree I agree with him. I so actually agree with him. I know where he's coming yeah, from. Like, I think there's just something... That, 
there's a, the only thing he has to be now to be world class is to kind of put the put the, the titles on the table, like you know, put your medals on the table. There's very there's there's not many world class players in the world, um. But honest to God, uh, just a man with the fucking magic from him and the the humility of players like him, and that's what I I love the whole. I watching the game last week and. Winning trophies with players like Endo and McAllister and Darwin Nunes, he was fucking so badly maligned in the eye of the media. And I, I, I don't want to get into it because a thing I'm going to talk about later. Oh, is I, will. I, actually, I don't give a fuck about the external. I really don't. So when you're talking about it later, I don't ask me because I, I don't. I genuinely don't <laughs> give a fuck. I have to ask you, Charlie. No, I, I can't leave you sitting there for 25 minutes just no, going, I will. No, I will. No, I'm not I because I couldn't give a fuck about the external. Ah, but, you, but, there's, but there's some great no. reactions to this, Shani. Come oh, on, there's some great no. stuff. It's it's bullshit bollocks. I know that, it like, is, but it's brilliant, Shani. No, Do you know why? Brilliant. Because I said it last week. I said it last week. I'm going to say it again. WWE. It's, Pe- it's, yeah, but it's people brilliant. are trying to be, people are trying to pretend to be, you know, um, uh, you know, constructive with, with our words on this but you can't fail to see the hate and the jealousy pouring out of them and it's fucking I think it's amazing because well, Tom Boland says go on no, was Tom Boland says I think, I think it, the, the external and I, I think it's the approach that the team are kind of taking and you hear them all talking about it. I don't think the external matters it's just all noise like and, oh you, not, you, not to not to the, not to the that, team that, I'd much rather win trophies with with Taro Endos and Alexis McAllister's and Darwin Nunes, they're not the little piss ants you see running around for everyone else. And fuck what everyone else says, because the, the sad reality of it is they're, they're all becoming talk sport. It's all becoming talk sport. It's all becoming WWE. There's no substance to anything any anything anybody is saying. It's just it's garbage. I can't even lend myself to it. Even no, I'm, say, I'm not going to... I wouldn't say lend yourself to that. I just think some of the reactions... No, um, Gav, again, I'll go back to it. Tribalism makes fucking idiots out of everybody. And you just, people can't just be, just can't say it as it is. You get, look, you seen yesterday, oh, it's going to fall. This, who gives a fuck? We're right there in the middle of it all. Uh, and we could win everything this year and then just turn around and go, well, Klopp's gone. So what, what does it matter? Nothing we do will ever. All you're ever gonna get is detractors. Fuck all these idiots! Don't. Oh, no, don't I, 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 I don't. I don't think you should. I don't think you should worry about the detractors. I couldn't give a gee what fucking Mike Dean has to say. Mark Clattenberg was on BBC uh, one a half six yesterday, telling fellas, f- fella who was pretending his name is the Viper, acting like he's a WWE <laughs> heel, and he's pretending to be him in the because he's on the fucking lady on a TV show called the. There's a fella on the radio called the Viper. No, this gladiators. Is, the new gladiators. He's, he's ah, yeah, no, he should stick to that. Yeah, he should stick to that. He's going to keep this fella in check. He was pretending to be a heel and a bad guy. Oh, right. and I'm going, hold on. The you're new wolf, man. You're, you're, on, you're sitting in the stand coming out fucking questioning the Premier League when you're, you're sitting in a studio down the road in Sheffield fucking uh, on the reboot of a 90s television programme Pretending yeah. like you're fucking dogs bollocks. I and hope he gets a belt of the travel later on next Saturday night. People, people, people expect you to take these fucking idiots serious. I'm telling you, just look around football medium. Football focus, dead on its ass. Match of the day. I'd say you can count on one hand how long that's going to last. That, yeah. that, used to be, that used to be a fucking staple of, of, of British television. I haven't and watched Match of the Day Dork in, I'd now. say, 10 years. There you go. Yeah, Dork. listen. Sky Sports, full of YouTubers. Fucking Gary Neville on the South Box last week. You know we're gonna get Champions League this week. It's all rubbish noise. How can you not be enjoying just what's going on on the football? Yeah, team? but how can you not? How can you not enjoy a chairman of a football team running on the pitch afterwards? Like, I, I, like I'm not. He's like, the, the, he's like a character that was so pack on the yeah. sideline. <laughs> yeah. 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 Come here, come what here, right? It? No, I, 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 I'm, I'm with you on the. Hold on, hold on. I'm with you on the detractors. I'm with you on the detractors, right? The last thing I'll say is. <laughs> The camera. It's pans not going to be the last thing you say. No, now it is. I genuinely, no, the camera pans at the in the melee of all the madness that's going on the pitch yesterday, and Van Dyke is just standing there breaking his bollocks, laughing at them all. He's all going, look at all this. Mad-. He was waiting for fucking Stone Cold to run out of the oak with a chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and then some fella that used to play for Ireland got sent off. Stephen Reid yeah. was it? Yeah. 
Yeah, he honestly, got sent off. Anyway, I don't know how we got there. We weren't we weren't meant to get there for ages. Um, that should 20... be yeah, that should be a yeah mentality gone for. I was just laughing. Anyway, <laughs> forty minutes of silence from Shawnee Lawson starting <laughs> now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but look, uh, like Tom Boland says, there what Liverpool did yesterday was like what Sir Alex Alex Ferguson United team did. The difference is Sky applauded United, and now we're digging to find excuses to, to play that to down players. This goes back. This goes back to the point I made on a, this podcast years ago when I said that there's a certain era of, of people from a certain area on Sky and BBC and whatever, and they grew up with Liverpool winning everything. And they could, they were all right with United winning things, but when Liverpool come back to win anything, they're like, these fuckers again. Like, Matt Letizia was just hounded, like, haunted by man, by Liverpool, and then it went on to 5G. He just he just fucked Liverpool up and got haunted by 5G and stuff. Um, But but this this is what you're at. And, like, Emma, do they get, do they get enough credit for what they're doing? Like they win it, they win it, they win a league cup in extra time last week. They bring on a load of youngsters and forget the average age show you and that other mongo that's on with Rio Ferdinand. Rio Ferdinand is I'm doing a podcast with this fella. That's all you need to know. It backs up Sean. Don't mention his name. Right. Don't mention his name. Yeah, no, I won't. Um, <laughs> but but the thing is, right? Like you see, you see, like they win that. They they have a tough game during the weekend to Luton because of the players that are out, the minutes and the legs. They win that. They come away to Forest who are fighting for their lives. Liverpool are down a lot of men. Again, no fucking no rest time, straight in, win the game again. And everything that comes out of it, unless you're a Liverpool fan, right? And the, and in fairness, the odd Nottingham Forest fan I did say gone. We weren't robbed there. We were just beaten by a better team who still had a load of players out. But are Liverpool getting the credit they deserve here? No. Long and long and short of it, uh, no, they're not. Or, or if they are getting credit, because you will pick up on the odd little snippet where they are getting credit, but that doesn't get like just to go with what Sean is saying is that doesn't get the the traction that the the detractors get. So that's why you're probably not. Yeah, they probably are getting it, but just not the loudest voices giving them credit. Like Klopp said it himself. If you had asked me 11 days ago, would we win all four games? He said, I would have told you, no, it's not possible. Yeah. So, they're, like, it's going to be up to, like, channels like us, other Liverpool channels, to give these lads the credit. But you can, you just know for a fact that they're getting it in bucket loads from Klopp and the staff as well. And Shawnee, or I don't know whether it was Shawnee or Keith said that, they'll, they'll block all this stuff out. I know there's a certain amount of social media that they'll see and stuff like that, but... Sean, he said it there as well, just laughing in the in the faces of the, the lads that were going mad. Like, do you know what I mean? These these lads should, they'll be all media trained. They'll laugh all of this stuff off. But no, the, the long and short of it is, is that they're not getting a, a, enough credit. I don't think so. Um, like, uh, we mentioned Match of the Day. On Match of the Day last night, they mentioned Kelleher knocking into Kanate. They mentioned the referee not giving them back the ball. And they, re- they mentioned the fact that Gomez could have given away a penalty. Not one of them mentioned, now we're on a WWE team, was Yates coming in, like a full pelt with his full head high with the studs up. Yeah. Not one mention of I'm not saying anywhere mentioned that. Yeah. Any of these kind of uh, clip programs or anything, or other podcasts are non, non-Liverpool podcasts. So, like, like fair is fair. Like, that, like, that should have been a free out. Who gives a shit where the fucking drop ball went? I know you yeah. probably do, Gab. We'll talk about that. Yeah, but well, I'm gonna get on to it. You, you need to take the rough with it. Like, call it, like it. That's the thing, though. When you're when you have a fair and balanced opinion on these things, you don't get the coverage or the traction that everybody else. All these fucking lunatics that are saying that Liverpool are cheats for, for start. I don't know how Liverpool yeah. can be cheats when it's the ref that made the mistake. If he made the mistake of not giving the ball back to Nottingham Forest, the goal was scored a minute and fifty seconds. After they didn't give the ball back to Forrest. Yeah. They also How they also they Liverpool also gained, Cheech? Yeah, look look to get in to get into that a little bit, right? Robert Maguire said earlier, why aren't the commentators saying in the first half uh Liverpool were in a position of the ball when the Forest player went down and the ref gave the ball to Forrest, right? So th- and and that's fine. Dylan O'Rourke was watching Kenny Cunningham yesterday, he didn't want to name him, right? Jeez. But he said um 
but he said, I watched the post-match on Premier Sport on a legal stream, I may add, and the statement was, I still think Liverpool have struggled in midfield all season, even though they're top of the league. Um, that's definitely Kenny Cunningham. It's 100% Kenny Cunningham. Don't try to tell me it's anybody else. Right? Or, or, the, or there's other mate that sits, the, the fella that sits in the studio room from Cork. He's a Damien Delaney. Balloon. Yeah. Um, Gavin Walsh says, why is nobody in the media taking digs at Clattenberg at being employed by Forrest to undermine refs? So, look, Keith, on this, right, I think I think he gets the decision wrong twice yesterday, right? Yeah. And I think because he gets the first one wrong, I think he deliberately gets the second one wrong. Now, the rule is, this is the rule, the rule is that if uh, the head injury occurs and the play has to be stopped while the ball is in the, op- in, in the penalty area, okay, the ball must be given back to the defending goalkeeper, all right? That's the rule. In both instances, the ball goes out. But I think they both go outside the box and they drop to one, a Liverpool player, and the other one, a Nottingham Forest player. He blows the whistle both times and both goalkeepers end with it back. That's the rule, right? Clattenberg comes on afterwards and states the rule, right? And states it more or less correctly, but then wants two different outcomes to what's happened. He wants the Forest goalkeeper to get it because it was on the edge of the box, but he wants the Forest player to get it at the other end because it was near the corner flag, right? Which makes no fucking sense at all. Absolutely none, right? And you're, and the whole thing about Clattenburg is, and this is where Shawnee is absolutely bang on, the fact that Mark Clattenburg is now doing the gladiators. And when he's not doing that, he's sitting at the city ground and telling people on national radio that he's going to advise the manager and the board and the owners as to how to proceed against these things when it happens. It is an absolute farce, Keith. He definitely gets these, I think he gets both decisions wrong, but, it, but the one thing you would say is that he's consistent in it. Do you think one leads to the other? I think it might. Yeah, look, how many times have we said it on this? Referees are shy. Like, yeah. they're incompetent at the end of the day. It's not up to Liverpool to enforce the rules for fucking Paul Tierney. It's up to Paul Tierney to know the rules. Now, I don't think he, he deliberately done that to even up the one in the force. I just think he's a fucking cabbage that doesn't really understand what's going on and struggles under pressure. <laughs> Like, I think, I don't think he deals with pressure well. And I think if anything's in his head, it's the fact that he knows there's the issues with him and Klopp. And maybe that's affecting him. He's fucking useless. But the way I look at that, right, Mark Clattenburg, for a start, right, he's been wheeled out here as some oh, ex-referee, ex-Premier League referee, employed by Nottingham Forest. So he's hardly fucking impartial. So let's just Do move Forrest, on should Forrest Should Forrest be looked at... Uh, um some sort of disciplinary reaction here because someone within their club is, is out undermining referees regardless of who we were Hold on, Evil Knievel's gone boy again I'm going on mute for a second Can, I, can right. I just say in terms of tyranny and maybe someone that's in the chat can go back and maybe have a quick look at a video but when I was watching it last night I'm nearly sure that he mouths the words well he obviously didn't mouth them he said them but when you're watching it you don't hear him saying it I gave it to you in the first half I'm nearly sure if someone can go back and check I haven't that, seen that put it into the comments Lucy. Wow. I'm nearly sure he does. Yeah, I it's, haven't seen that. Uh, it's tip like, like how 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 has nobody in the media mentioned that this is about two and a half minutes before we score? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, in yeah. fairness, yeah. Neil Mellor, I think Neil Mellor does a tweet and he breaks it down. There's about eight different phases of play yeah. between that and the goal, and and people are going on about games being fucking. Over rest and what did he want to do? Do you want do you want to pull back that goal over something that happened two and a half minutes ago and say, yeah. Well, you know what? It's a kick out. There was eight minutes at a time because the forest keeper jumps on the ground and wastes fucking six minutes sitting down pretending he's injured. They've two players booked for time wasting it. Like Well, if two players fuck- booked sorry, the two players booked for time wasting within the eight minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And well, Canate's head injury is within the eight minutes as well. It's it's a minimum. The, a commentator was Everyone saying, forgets the word minimum, though, Sean. It's, it's the minimum, key word in the whole fucking thing. Minimum fucking eight minutes at a time. Eight minutes at a time. And then he's adding on every all the little shit that's going on in between. Like, it's, it's again, it's tribalism making fucking tarts out of people. And the thing is now, the, the TNT, Sky Sports, wherever you get your football from, it's all about what can we do that's going to cause create engagement underneath this post on X or fucking Instagram or whatever. It's just, yeah. it, it's, it's, it, I can't believe how much time people waste even leaning into it. It's because it's bullshit. 
It's well, bollocks. Just, just read this from Christmas Eve. Car, who's, who's Carl, right? We know it's Carl, right? He's just, he's on his daughter's account. He doesn't have to set up a YouTube account. He's whatever. <laughs> he says, even lads, was onto a fellow referee from across the water, right? Carl is a referee. Yes, the law. The ref made a balls of it. He could have blown for an indirect free out, but it was missed. This is a National League referee that says this to him. And if, if, um, what's his face? Tierney has said to Forrest, I gave it to you in the first half. Then he's definitely made the wrong decision in the first half because all he'd have to do was turn around and go, that's the rule. That's the mm. rule. I think what happened is in the first half that ball breaks out, Liverpool get it on the edge of the box and he decides, I'm giving up. I, I think he makes a mistake and gives it to the keeper. Right? And then at the, at the end of it, this happens again. He goes, I have to give this to the keeper because I've done it earlier. I've made a mistake earlier. I'm going to have to double down on my mistake here and give it back to him. Now, Maybe there's something in the law that if it's, if it's within the confines of the box or within the two squares each side of the box, you know, that kind of, that area of the pitch, there's something in it. But I don't think well, there is. Cause usually, like, none of this will matter if... No, well, well let, let me read out something else here. 96, 96 minutes and 45 seconds, referee gives the... L Le referee gives the ball back to LFC 97 minutes and 23 seconds Forrest get the ball and panic clear 97 minutes and 50 seconds Forrest fail to clear and, and when can um, 98 minutes and 31 Forrest have comfortable possession and lose it 98 minutes and 37 seconds it's 1-0 to Liverpool so, I think we have to differentiate the, the, the fucking the drop ball and the goal because they're two separate things do you know what I mean it's, it's two minutes I previous. agree with you you know what I mean? Like, I think, did i seen a good thing on Twitter today, or X or whatever it's called. Like, we're arguing over the, the ref giving the ball back to the wrong team on a drop ball, right? Nobody would fucking blink an eye if this was a goal kick given instead of a corner. Do you know what I mean? That was yeah. a clear fucking, you know, goes out for a corner. And it's just, you get on with it. These things happen. This is something different. It's a, it should have should have gone to Forrest probably should have been a free kick to Liverpool and anyway fucking move on Forrest had all the chances in the world to clear that ball in fact in the actual lead up to it it's he was a uh, our knee that gets caught on the edge of the box is yeah. it yeah. like Dilly Dallion Hudson Adoy yeah. Dilly Dallion like they had the chances if they cleared their lines it's a nil all draw yeah. out of but, it's, but it's like, but it's would, like uh, saying what would, what would people be saying right what would people be saying <laughs> in the media if Liverpool were on the end of conceding a goal there yesterday after that happened, we'd be called every night. We'd be called every name under the sun. Rangers and yeah. to get fucking yeah. on with it. The way we were back in September, the way we were told, look at these fucking agents looking for replays. Oh, what, what, what's going on? FIFA mm -hmm. writing it to real now that replays might be a necessity if there's a VAR, if there's a VAR issue. But we're the we're always the worst cunts yeah. in the world when it comes yeah. to it. Like, and that's the thing is it just. Roll with all this shit. And but, just, but, but, but Sean, you see, where I agree with you most on this is. Right? But, um, I, I think something happened. That I when Rock was, was young. No, lockdown sorry. Football. Football. It was in lockdown football and Roy Kane turns around and goes, yeah, he makes a mistake, but United had four or five opportunities to get rid of the ball between the goal and the mistake. So whose fucking fault is it really? And, and that's that's what not or not one single analyst upon the have I seen picking up goal. Why isn't your man Awanimi just putting the fucking ball into the stand instead yeah. of trying to dribble it over and then turn around moan at a ref? Yeah. It's out of bollocks. Honestly. Well, like, it, it, Gavin Walsh said something here, and I think this is where I agree with you most on the whole, you know, it, it's just a big fucking entertainment narrative thing, right? He says, that joke shop Mike Dean called the drop ball a monumental decision. Mike fucking Dean, give me strength and patience. Now Mike Dean is interviewed before the game earlier on today. Um, I think he's in this, I think it's in the, in the City Stadium he's interviewed. And, He's basically going, yeah, Paul's made an awful decision there. And it went from a bad one to an awful one to a really, you know, high-profile one to monumentally. He just builds it up every sentence, he says, that the decision gets worse and worse and worse. But Mike Dean doesn't turn around and go at any stage and turn around and go, and you know what? He actually does the same in the first half when Liverpool are on the attack and he and he cut, he, he blows the whistle because there's a problem, which he should do. And then he actually gives it back to Forrest when he should have given it back to Liverpool. So both teams actually got the wrong end of the wrong, you know, were on the wrong end of a, a wrong decision. He he refuses to say that, and nobody says it. And like like you said, and like people have said, it's two minutes of football. That's a lot of fucking football between that ball being dropped, Forrest getting the ball back on three or four occasions, and even when before McAllister gets it, two of the players have a chance to clear the fucking ball. So are we going to get to the stage now where? 
if Liverpool are anyone's chasing the game, ball goes down the wing, defender kicks it off a forward, but the forward gets the throw in. Throws it, we play for a minute and we score. Are we going to go back and go, uh, what about the throw in a minute ago? Mate, there was fucking 25 phases of play. And then you are like, is that where we're at? And I'm not saying Paul Tierney is right in any way, right? I, I think he's wrong on both occasions. I think he's wrong on both occasions, but he's consistent in it. But we can't keep going back. And, and it's like I said to you a, a few of you yesterday. If we draw that game nil all yesterday, we c- have no reason to sit here tonight and go, well, Paul Tierney is this. Because, in, in fairness, the game kind of went by and I didn't really know it was Paul Tierney. Right? We didn't score. We didn't create enough chances. We didn't score a goal. The 98 minutes thing, like if we are sitting there on 99 and a half going, oh, well, they fucking, you know, they you know, got bookings in the thing. There's no real argument there, right? There's no real argument. What happened in that game yesterday is what happened. And if it comes out in the law, you go, we didn't do enough. You can't really have a go at the ref. You can't really have a go at the time. But just by chance, this mad cunt up front puts his head in it and scores and the place goes mental, right? Tries to break his foot in the process then by upending the city ground and the advertising hoarding. But that's just the way the game went. And the whole drop ball thing is not an issue. The only issue it's being made of is because they're telling one side of the story. And they're forgetting that he makes the mistake earlier on in the game. And if he's if he's mounted or he said it like you said, Emma, that's clearly him knowing he's made a mistake in the first half. Because if anyone comes to him and he's 100% right, he goes, that's the law. That's the law. What, what's, what are you giving out to me for? That's the rule of the game. But he doesn't. He said something different. Anyway. Um, Can I just say on him as well, to give a bit of credit, because we've we we dig the refs out all the time, right? All the because time, they are shit. It. Yeah. But well, he had the best best opportunity ever to get back at Klopp yesterday. After Klopp saying, "I don't have a problem with anybody but you," when Klopp has a meltdown where Bradley kind of pulls out of a tackle and your man throws himself. He goes down on the ground. I, yeah. I, I I thought when he starts walking towards him, I thought he's giving him a yellow here and he's gonna be off the line for the seat again. Yeah. And it doesn't. Um, and somebody I don't know what is on the post show yesterday maybe that Kev or Matt said that they think that maybe the fourth official might have said <coughs> actually like it wasn't it wasn't a yeah. foul like, and that's probably the reason why but like for for and I know Sean he's not big on the there's an agenda against uh, Liverpool with the referees if there was I think that that was probably his ideal moment to, to right. stick it to clap big time so Mm. They're all a big bag of scrotums. So That's all, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, come here. Um, let let let's 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 move on, right? Um, because I want to talk about a couple of players in a minute. But Keith, <laughs> Keith, the the chairman turning up on the pitch is one of the best things I've ever seen. Like genuinely, right? I'm watching it. I'm fucking all out. Yes, right. Fucking delighted, right? And next of all, the players going around the pitch. I'm fucking yes. Every Liverpool player that turns up, I'm fucking shouting their name and I'm giving them loads, right? And the next of all, it's like. What's going on here? There's just people everywhere, right? The ref's like, no, yellow card, red card. And I'm like, what is going on? Virgil van Dijk, like Shani said, is standing there going, what are you all doing? And the next one is just a picture of this big, huge fella in a suit going, <laughs> right? I was like, what's going on? Like, imagine John W. Henry running down the main stand out onto the, onto the pitch next Sunday, trying to punch the head off Howard Webb or whoever's in charge. No, it won't be him. He doesn't ref anymore. But one of them lads, one of the baldy fellas. But it wouldn't look as funny. Because your man's like blading to go compare fella or Pavarotti coming down one <laughs> out onto the main pitch. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, what's this fella doing? It's, it was crazy. And it's, you know, that fella's a head case. And anyway, I think by the way he runs his clubs, there's, you know, a bit of instability there. And, and when you feel like everything's going against you, and look, we've all, as fans, we've all been there where you think everything goes against you. He just reacted disgracefully, in all fairness. And we saw the incident in uh, Turkey, wasn't it, when the chairman came on and Bladen oh, yeah. gave a solid to a referee and players wailing in and all. Like, it, it sets a bad precedent, I think. And, you know, with managers, like, the stuff that Klopp gets... But he has to go down flights of stairs to get there. Yeah. Like, it's not like he's standing at the, at the dugout. He, in, in up and up, like, it's like being up in the attic in your gaff, right? And hearing someone knocking going, that's not for me, but fuck it, I'm going to walk these two flights of stairs to find out what the fuck's going on. <laughs> he's literally gone flights of stairs, Keith, here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's not like Darwin. He's like Darwin and Sabo coming down the stairs <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. jumping over fucking fences and all that. Now, look, all joking aside, I think it's a disgraceful precedent to be set. I think for chairman to be coming out onto the pitch and arguing over something, something and nothing. Do you know what I mean? A fucking hot ball going the wrong way. As I said, corner goal kick, throw in the wrong way. It's a fucking decision. Give out to you. Lash your team out of it. 
think we need more of it to be quite honest. Yeah, but like, 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 but the guy is if I can't. Like, is, is, the Spirit of Santo, is the Spirit of Santo going into that man's office tomorrow, right? Is the Spirit of Santo going into that man's office tomorrow going, listen, I know we lost, but what about the drop ball? Right? And going, and going into training and going, listen, here's all the video analysis, but we're doing no analysis from 96 minutes to 99 minutes because they gave a wrong drop ball. So I'm not even going to analyze what you've all done wrong because I'm letting you all away with it. Do you know what I mean? And the chairman out on the pitch and everything. And then there's people getting sent out. And look, it's, you actually think back to it. Van Dyke's standing there trying to shake people's hands and there's just mayhem going on. And he's just looking around going, what's happening? It's like, um, when, uh, it's like when the two bollocks made a uh, bollocks of the two boys made a bollocks of the Royal Rumble a few years ago and Vinny Mack came steaming down the ramp into the ring. Yeah. <laughs> And Taj tears two of his quads off the bone and he's going down in the middle of the ring shouting at people telling them what to do. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, fucking hell, spare the Santos at the point on some timber, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine, the, the, could you imagine the chairman lying behind the goal for that last car and I go, Mark up, lads. Mark <laughs> up. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely, like, I'm, like, I'd imagine now when I was driving home, his car going, what was that? And he's gonna to have to go into his office one night and get sacked yeah. by someone like him. Yeah. So I'm asking the show he has to put up with. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. And Mark Clarenberg oh, sitting on the on, on the on the chairman's fucking on his on his shoulder going, Yeah, I think you should say something to the Premier League. <laughs> uh, but I have to go now because there's they're yeah, fighting yeah. with fucking drumsticks up the road here in a half an hour. <laughs> fucking arsehole. <It's> uh, <laughs> when Vinnie McMahon blew both his quads, Chris Pack is roaring <laughs> laughing at that. Um but look Let's let's talk a little bit about Liverpool because look, when all is said and done, you know City have won today against United. Um, Jesus Christ, United played like Luton. Um, Arsenal will win away at Sheffield United tomorrow night by numerous amount of goals and loads of the goals. But Liverpool just keep putting that putting it out there, and, and you know I think our next three league games are actually at home, and um, because of the way things have fallen now, um, City, Brighton, and. Someone else in there, I can't remember who it is. Um, but like Emmett, you know, it's a great win. The way we win it, the whole lot. We've a, we've a European game now on Torsi, then we've City, then we've another European game, then we've an FA Cup game, and then I think it's the international break. But like, where can these lads go? Like, and I know I'm I'm all for it. I'm all for winning everything. But and you know, part of me does be like, you know. God, you're fucking mad if you think we can win everything. But that's just the way I am. If we're in it, I think we can win it. But, Emma, we keep getting players back here. And these young lads just keep getting that bit of experience where you can just slot them in for 20 here or 25 there or even start them. Like, there has to be teams around us really, really, really fucking worried now. Definitely. Like, look look who's still to come back. I mean, Nunes obviously comes on, scores his goal, but, like... When, when he's starting games, we're a completely different team. Sabasloy comes back. Then I think the next back will probably be uh, Salah. Then maybe Trent. And then hopefully come the, like And these are all first team start. These all, they, they, may, they might not go straight back into the first 11. But prior to injury, they were our starting team. Um, but having these lads as backup or on the bench, like even Dan's, I think... Like when when strikers have come on before, and I, I don't mean to be disparaging against Gordon because I think he's a really good player, but I don't think he's had the impact in such a short space that even Dan's had. But even just seeing the flashes from Dan's holding the ball up, playing the, I mean, he sets that goal up, uh, the Elliot goal, um, with a, with a slip ball through to 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 Gakpo. It's it's like they they fit straight in. I think we've said it several times. We've probably got the deepest. And this was prior to probably seeing some of these. We probably got the deepest squad in the Premier League. Now you add in these three or four lads that have impressed over the last few weeks, and like, it's it's scary um, how good um, I think we we can be. Like we Nunes has his Vincent Company moment yesterday. Or, or, yeah, yesterday. Um, like they would have been all prepared and all the, like the, Arsenal definitely watched that match. City definitely watch that match and they're thinking lovely these are about to drop points and then we get that goal it's like when we were all watching the the Leicester City game and we're thinking Jesus they're going to drop two points and then he pulls that shot out of the bag and you're just deflated and that's Pep knows we're going nowhere he, he, he hates it that it's us 
that's there. Okay, Arsenal are probably still there. I think they'll still drop off a little bit. But yeah, it's, look, I'm with you. I've been with you for a long time, probably since November time, and in terms of going for all four. Um, but I think uh, our, pro- our squad has probably never been as healthy under Klopp, I don't think. Um, we've had one or two lads that have come through and kind of fallen away. I don't see these lads. Like, I know Jones has been around for a good few years, but I see these lads in the, in the mould of Jones. They want their place in this first team now. They've had a little taste of it. It's like heroin. They've had they've had it, and now they want more of it. And <coughs> I, like just don't, and I don't... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is man saying tonight. I <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But um, yeah, I don't, I don't see them going. Out. These, these will be permanent fixtures now. In, yeah, in I, the first team squad. Does, does no? Well, look, I think the way they've played, performed, and carried themselves, I think you know they deserve it. Will many of them be looking going? Oh, I'm going out on loan. You know, sort of way. <laughs> and may, may, maybe it will. But Shawnee, I said very at the very start about this game kind of being a catapult when I was talking to Kev the other night, um, Friday night, that can, it can be the catapult for going into the rest of the season, you know, the next couple of games for an international break and then whatever comes after that and what a way to start, like, catapult it. But, you, like, like, Klopp talks about oh, winning those four in 11 days, we, I felt it was impossible, but Sean, he definitely has to have a plan here where he goes, right? Uh, Sparta Prague, um, City, Sparta Prague United this is four games now in, in another fucking whatever amount of days um, but with the players coming back Shawnee and those players we have there I keep going back to it we still have more to come in us Shawnee there's more to come into this team yeah, like yeah. the, the, I know he's trying to plan it but when when does Klopp get to the stage where he goes you know what F- fuck this I can, I can put anybody in I, I'm literally just going to trust You're everyone already. here And no, I know he has and some of it's being pushed on him but what I'm saying is where does Klopp get to the stage where I have another three back here but I'm still keeping these boys and I'm still putting them in and I think that strikes more fear into teams than if we just get all these players back and then go right them young lads aren't playing anymore you know because teams nearly know what you're going to do that's not going to happen no I don't think so either that's what I'm asking because- I think I I I think he's got. I think clubs rolled the dice in the last month in terms of. I reckon at a push to Bosloy and Darwin probably could have played on midweek. Genuinely, I reckon they could have been on the bench at least, and I reckon Mo probably could have even made the bench yesterday at a push if you really wanted him to. I genuinely do. I believe that because that's the thing. Like we spoke, like we spoke. I I said this yesterday in the group. I I think um. The, the the flip side to these type of seasons where you're playing 60 games, where you go all the way in the Carabao, you go deep in Europe and you have a good run in the FA Cup and there's jeopardy in literally every single Premier League game, you find towards the back end of the season, you kind of start to tail off because it just catches up. Um, you have a core group of maybe 13, 14 players who get you to the dance. But I think we've been in a situation now that where Look again, there's massive four games coming up, and we've we've ridden the storm impeccably well so far with the four wins that we've got. Um, but we're going to be looking getting to the back end of the season where a, a relatively fresh Trent who's after having some time out and and a, and a nice rest. You'll have Graven Burke who's had a little bit of a rest in and there. You have McAllister who's missed games here and there. He was not like overload uh, minutes in his legs. Endo seems like he can go forever. Curtis Jones is going to come back in at some stage after having a little rest from a break, chomping at the bit, coming in, having to win games. We've Mo Salah, who's played two games for us since Christmas. You know, like, this is what you kind of need to be looking at in terms of the shape of the squad. It's been tough in recent weeks, but it's been propped up. And I think the story of this season, for me, if you had to put this season down to some sort of slogan, it would be that everyone is stepping up and doing that fucking job. That every like when we needed the three boys to step up and Mo was away, they did. When you need lads to come in, young lads to come in and, and deputise, they've been fucking excellent. Like I haven't thought in my mind months that we're missing Trent Alexander Arnold because Connor Bradley has been a fucking revelation since coming in. Jarrell Kwanzaa basically just said, Matt up for the season, don't worry, boys, I'll play his minutes. No fucking problem at all. Robbo's out left back. Gomez, I'll do a job there. It was looking a bit sticky for Robertson when a minute you were thinking, is he going to get back in the fucking team? And then you've Gomez going in. 
these lads, every single one of them have stepped up. And Kelleher, I can't forget Kelleher because he's another one who's kind of literally going, you know what? Start of the season, looked rusty as fuck and was like, right, I think we might have missed the boat with this fella and we need to get him out as soon as we can because he needs to play football. He's been fucking excellent since coming, coming in. Like, that's that's what this season is built on for me, is that when responsibility is being shifted from the main, main fellas to the side character, so to speak, they stepped up and they fucking made it count. Years gone by when we were winning titles in Champions Leagues um, and it got a bit sticky in the cup competitions and we had to throw lads in that we couldn't fucking rely on. You're talking down, do you know what? We have a couple of bodies missing in the midfield. This is perfect time for Chamberlain to come in. Oh, but Chamberlain's out for six weeks. Chamberlain's out for eight weeks. We haven't gotten there. Eight to the same. It's fucking... It, it, it's... It's been a joy to watch these lads come in. And again, you're not... you're not. There's no winsome when Clark's in the team yesterday because you go, we know this fella can do a fucking job. People are getting on Gagbo's back. back in yeah, the I, wanted, I wanted to talk about... He's been a great one, but... <coughs> Hasn't been to the one to try and he's walked in his absolute bollocks off. He's put the team on his back in recent weeks and you can't you can't dismiss that. He's not he's not gonna just spot score goals all the time. Gagbo's another one who's been brought in and played in the eight, played out right. He played, played everywhere him, hasn't he? Yeah, it, that's so fucking hard to get rid of when you play play. But games. he's played Gagbo's played twenty five games in the Premier League this season. Yeah. Twelve off yeah. starts, thirteen off the bench, yeah. right? But the thing is I think Kakbo's going to be in hit both ways here. I don't think he's got a massive run in the side to get a rhythm. But then I think, which which always helps, I think he's been very stop-start and starts and sub and starts, kind of alternating there. But then I think, when you look at it, Kakbo's been in a team now where Salah's been out for quite a bit. Nunes has been out for a bit. Diaz has been out for a bit. Jot has been in and out. Elliot's gone up and played up front there. Dan's has come. You know, he's played on an awful lot of players in testing kind of situations for Liverpool throughout the season coupled with the fact that he's starting one sub starting one sub and um, like you know Christian there saying Gakpo was trash under Amorim he won't improve because he under Amorim who the Christian, fuck is Amorim who the fuck is that we, we, we don't win the League Cup without Gakpo he scored some important goals but what I'm saying is like, but like, but then, but like I, I'm with um Cam the Mind TV says Diaz and Elliot were so deep midweek. Gakpo was practically a lone forward. He's best when he's got players around him. And he actually he actually says earlier people need to lay off Gakpo. He's run his bollocks off, and he has. But like, come here, I tell you, when you when you see this team, right? Did Andy Robertson have a great game the other day? No, he just played six and a half, seven out of ten. Should have probably scored. Fine, that's Andy Robertson doesn't score an awful lot of goals. But did Andy Robertson have a great game in the League Cup final? Don't think he did. I just think he done his job. Wasn't outstanding, but I'm not going to sit here after them two games and go, Andy fucking Robertson, fuck that. Like, well, why do we have to find what exactly? And look, and don't get me wrong, I can be accused, I'm quite rightly at times of being over optimistic about players, or you know, I, I don't think I'm um, too loyal to players like where I go, no, he's going to be great. I don't give a fuck if he hasn't started for five years, he's going to be great. I, I don't do that, I just tell you as I see it, but I can be over optimistic about players where I kind of give them too much of a benefit of the doubt I think is where I, where sometimes I can be and I'll admit to that most people do but I'm I'm simply not looking at Liverpool over the last 10, 12, 14 days and going I oh, yeah but Gakpo should you know what I mean like, why, 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 why do we need to do it don't get me wrong has Gakpo been amazing probably no. not but you know what if if, if, Gakpo, if you put Gakpo on the bench and stuck a fucking young foot up front now Jaden Dan's been really good so probably not the best kind of example but if you Success if you built on players like Gakpo's back it's, it's all about players. it's all about bodies being there exactly. facilitating yeah. each other One helping round, each other working for each other not going to do a system for the manager who might never manage Liverpool it's it's all kinds of bad shit insanity <laughs> that yeah 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 for, that's crazy mental gymnastics there, mate. Sit down and have a blade and smoke or something. Seriously. But Christian says then, hold on, sorry. So he comes back and says, Gak was in a team that creates countless chances and he only has 11 goals in all competitions. He has 11 goals in... A, in, in He's 11 goals in all competitions. Darwin Nunes has 14 goals in all competitions. Yeah. Lewis Diaz has 10. Oh, Lewis yeah. Diaz has 10. Yeah. Yeah, man, Christian be telling you that when Nunes wasn't good enough, wouldn't be good enough either if he hadn't scored the 90 minutes. And, uh, but look, I, I, if, if, if someone come on here and says, a little bit worried over Gakpo, someone said there, like, and it, it's, it's a fair one, he says, David says, 
he's just made some bad decisions of late. He'll be fine. I think that's a great yeah. assessment of him. I think he's made some bad decisions when he's had the ball. One the other day where we're on the break, give it back to Nunes, and he doesn't. He's shooting it's the side netting. He has a really good chance against L- Luton, doesn't he, during the week? And that happens to teams. That happens to teams. Like, Cam the mind says, lad was bought as a left winger and never once moaned about never playing there. Never plays left wing. Plays up front, plays on the right, plays as an eight. You know, is Gakbo in the best form of his life? No. But I'll tell you something now. If I told you tomorrow, Gakbo's out, out for six weeks, you'd be going, oh, for fuck's sake, what are we going to do up front now? So, so uh, look, I'm not, I'm, not, um, I'm not saying you can't say a player's in bad form. But just to come out and widely sweep Gakpo, that he's, he's awful. Gakpo's you know 11 goals I mean? in all competitions, but you need to realise that the four other fellas he's playing with as well does have probably 40 or 50 yard goals between them. Like he, 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 That's about as even as spread of goals you're going to get across the front five, yeah. attacking five. Can't not be happy with that because he's had a couple of poor performances. It's 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 silly. It's nitpicking. Honestly, it's it's a lot of bollocks. If I mean, yeah. I mean, and Centurion says Gakpo is the new Curtis Jones for now. I, I get exactly where you're coming exactly. from. Now. There's always one. There's always yeah, one. There'll always be one. And look, Christian, I'm not saying you, you've no right to an opinion. All I'm saying is, is that I think Gakpo, for the amount of games he's played, for the stop-start nature of it, and the teams he's been asked to come in, and the job he's been asked to do, to have 11 goals, and I don't know how many assists, right? I don't know, I haven't looked them up, right? But what I'm saying is, for I think he's done absolutely fine. What Has he been good in the last couple of weeks? He hasn't been standout, but I don't think loads have been standout. I think we've just gr- grinded into, into games and went, we're not being beaten here. There was no have we done what we had to do? We won, won a game, we won a game of football players. yesterday. We won a game of football yesterday. And I'm telling you now, you could count on half a hand how many fucking people were outstanding in that game yesterday. It wasn't about being outstanding. It was about making sure you weren't beaten in your in your individual battles, making sure you kept going. And if we got a chance, we win it. And that's what we done. Liverpool didn't come around there yesterday. That wasn't like Leicester away in 1920 where you went. They were all just there with this world. It wasn't about that. And it's not going to be about that. The amount of games you're going to see between now and May the 19th or whatever the season ends, the amount of games you're going to see where you're going, Liverpool were just fucking unreal there, are going to be few and far between. I'm telling you. And that goes for Arsenal and that goes for Man City as well. It's not about that. It's about winning games, preserving fucking um, players for the, the run in and seeing where you end up. End of the season is never waltzing football. It simply isn't. It never yeah. is. Um, right, we better get out of here in a few minutes. Um, but we do have we do have the game on on we do have this game coming up on Thursday. There's a night there's a night nice run of games coming now, and then you have an international break and stuff like that. And look, the lads have covered it quite well with regards to um, to um, you know how we might handle it. But I'm gonna ask you because I fucking can't. Um, Keith. Three trophies left to go. Come on. I'll let you pick again at the end of the middle of April. Yeah. I only wanted to win in the FA Cup to push that Everton game back to the back end of the season. Yeah. And then after that, I didn't give a bollocks about the FA Cup. I'm like, no, put that, park that one. Then you get United and it's like, really, I'm still in. Just when I thought it was out, they, they dragged me back in. Oh, I was like, oh, <laughs> so course, it's I like, guess. so I'm like, right, I want to beat them fuckers as well. So that puts you into a semi final. I want you there. Listen, you have to get to these. You put yourself in a position to get to them. And then I think then that's where we look at using the squad. So, you know, uh, if it's a thing, you in two years ago, we're going for a quadruple run. And we're flogging the bollocks out of players. And, you know, it's it's an intense period. And it hits you and then, bang, they fall off a cliff the next season. I think we're in a position now where we can go for four trophies. We've already got one in the bag. But where we can use a squad, as we said earlier, a deep squad, young lads. We said it there. Trent can play the blade in the FA Cup games. Do you know what I mean? Because he ain't getting back in ahead of Conor Bradley. <laughs> Jarrell Kwanzaa can go in and play. Bobby Clark can go in and play. You know what I mean? Look, we've got lads that are in there. Harvey Elliott. No one's mentioned Harvey Elliott. Again, maybe not in the best form. He's walking his bollocks off at Liverpool at the moment, playing 90, 90, 90 Centurion 90, said earlier, 90, 90, 120, 90, 75. That's Elliott's last like, minutes in the last five games. And see how disappointed he was when he came off yeah, yesterday. Yeah, good. Yeah. But that's that's I don't, I, I don't, that's I don't think that was being I don't think that was frustration with being substituted off. No. I think it was being frustrated with that it was still nil nil. Yeah, 
and, that and maybe I think you've seen get a chance to impact. There's a player that at the start of the season we were saying was was impacting off the bench, probably couldn't impact from the start. But now he's in there. I was at the the Luton game, you know, he, he's poured in that first half, he sticks where it gets a goal. Never stop running, never stop walking. And if you're in this stage, what you want is lads who are going to walk their bollocks off and run and put in them yards. Cause you'll Stop trust. dodging the question. Stop dodging the fucking question. Win How everything. Many? Win everything. Great stuff, Fuck Keith. I'm not in this to say we'll only win two or three. Win them all. Right. And the charity shield. And we put them all Fuck five them on the pitch. Yeah, and yeah Debbie. Um, and put a badge on our jersey. You know, we <laughs> sit here allowed to wear the World Club Champ badge. Yeah. We weren't allowed to wear it only for one game. We'll yeah. put our own badge on it. Come yeah. On. Big Carlin badge. Cup winners. <laughs> Big, Big Carlin Cup badge. Big Carabell. Carabell yeah. sign on Just it. a can Big of Carabell. Right. Emma, how many? <coughs> All four. No mess. I like it. Shawnee. Come on, Shawnee. Come on. Just give me the Premier League. I don't give a bollocks about the rest, to be honest with you. What? Give me the yeah, honestly, because I tell you what, you could win the FA Cup in your Europa League and we'll get fuck our credit from these going win the league and stick it up all that bollocks is. Honestly. Yeah. Win the league. That's I don't the get one. I'm being deadly honest with you. I know the final odds in Dublin and the romance will all be fucking brilliant. Be great to get there. I might look after yourself. Just win the Premier League because I genuinely couldn't give a bollocks about the rest. Honest to God. Give me no oh, I'm, I'm shocked and appalled. But win that. Yeah. If we were given a choice, if you're given a choice now of just the Premier League or just win the league run, or a good bollocks. run at the others, you take the league every time. You yeah, take but, the like, league every but time. they're all there to be won. And remember, the FA Cup and the Europa League finals are both after the league finishes this season, which um, is important. It's going to be important. Um, Roy, anything else before we go, Emma? No, all good. All good. Keith, anything else before we go? Are we nominating a sausage of the week? Or you can if you want. To... No, no, it's there was loads. Of, there was a big was bag of sausages there earlier. Fucking Stavros Flatley and all the other lads. That, that yeah, it has, to be. It has to be One Stavros. It has to be. He's been he's What's been called right? Stavros Flatley. Your man out of South Park. Something else. <laughs> Go yeah. compare. It's he's got it all today. Has to be him. Has to be. Yeah. Shani, anything else before we go? No, all good. All right, good stuff. Good stuff. Roy. Before we go, link is in the description for our fundraiser. There's loads and loads and loads and loads is in there tonight. As I say, if everyone watching goes on to that link now and gives one euro towards that charity, we'll piss this 10 grand, honestly. So if you can, the link is in the description. It's for fan support and field banks, and it's for the Lighthouse. Two amazing charities that are doing brilliant, brilliant work for um, people that are finding things hard and finding, you know, making it hard to make ends meet. Oh, geez, I struggle to get that out there. Um, but... The link is in the description for that if you can please do so if you have if you can't fine take the link send it to your friends and your family and explain what's going on here and ask them can they help out and if they can't tell them to share it on phil's um charity is also in there he's doing five iron man style um challenges between now and the end of the year which is off the chain mad that's for the laura lynn hospice which is um dublin's only children's hospice and um, which is an incredible service that look a lot of people you don't want to ever have to use it yeah. but there is people out there that do need to use it and it's a brilliant brilliant charity and what phil is trying to do is madness but phil's mad so if you can help him out with that please do as well um that's about it um robert mcguire is laughing at a bag of sausages no one ever seen a bag of sausages before no you win the okay, butchers you put them in a bag butchers, no? yeah 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 100 yeah 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 look at a bag of mints yeah. Did, you ever, did, did you hear the story about your man that walks his dog and he refuses to pick up the shit? So he brings, he cooks two sausages and brings them in the bag so it looks like shit. And then when he gets home after his dog, after walking his dog, him and his dog sit down on the step and have a and sausage. Two sausages. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Right, anyway, bag of sausages. When you go into buying mince, though, make sure you, if you're getting two pounds, it has to be two pounds in money worth of steak mince. Yeah. Because don't ask for two pounds of mince. It's going to cost you a matter of fortune. Just gonna that's old school, isn't it? Two old pound school. Of money. Two pounds of money worth of steak mince, please. Yeah. Send to the butchers many a times for that. Anyway, that has been the Talking Cup. It is Darwin Nunez's world. We are just happy enough to be living in it. 
Um, on to the next. We're back tomorrow. We're back tomorrow night. And um, we look back at the weekend. A few bodies on tomorrow night, definitely. And um, we'll do some morning shows during the week. We'll have reaction to the Europa League game, and we'll throw whatever we can at you between now and next weekend. Um, and then of course, um, you know, City next weekend. So we'll definitely have reaction to that, and we'll be back on Sunday night. Shawnee's having a little laugh. What would you like to tell us, Shawnee? Go on, Shawnee. You have to see something there. The major laugh. Read it out. Go on. Just. I can fucking reparate in that chat. I swear to God, just <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Let's let's go. Talk to you in a bit. Over and out.